Hello and welcome along and welcome back to a Charwell where it is day five of late autumn. Uh, and uh, and yeah, we are going to be using the Axion and the uh, Cedar later on. But first today, we have got to do some work with our pigs. So the pigs are in need of pretty much everything. Uh, so we're going to be doing them first and then we're going to be getting on to the uh, seeding later. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. First up, we're going to jump in our little eco here, and uh, and we need to, to clear them out. So we need to go and switch round to our bucket. It's a little bit dark at the moment because it's uh, it's being autumn. It's getting late. It's getting light really, really late at the moment. And this is the uh, this is the thing that threw me off. I am what it's six minutes past nine, and I've had to forward the time right the way forward to here in order to actually uh, have enough light to work with it. Even then, I'm going, right, I'm going to have to turn the lights on, on my equipment. Uh, now, we've got, uh, they need some more straw, so we'll do that in a minute. But first, I want to clear up what we've got in there. So we'll grab our JCB bucket, which actually, if you remember last time, turned out to be the most cost-effective uh, bucket we could get. And we're through. At some point, I also want to get chickens for here. We probably actually have, at the moment, enough money to get the chickens. So I think we might do that today as well. But yeah, the two jobs we need to do today uh, are to uh, to get the pigs sorted. Um, they are going to take a lot of our time up today. Um, and then we've got uh, a field over at um, field 41. And what we're going to be doing with that... Uh, is planting oilseed radish because in our uh, rotation we have oilseed radish as the next cro uh, the next thing to plant. We actually have fallow to be the next thing we need to plant or next thing we need to do after wheat. So the easiest thing for us to do is going to be to do that. I think that's a good angle for us to get a uh, screenshot from eventually for the uh, thumbnail for this video as well. Now this opens into the field, which means I'm going to hit the JCB. Never mind. Right, they'll be all right in a minute. We're not too far away. We'll usher them back in if they try to escape. I don't think they will. Uh, but yeah, so we've got, we got enough space for our chickens around this yard as well. So first thing I want to grab is the corn. And I think we've got our first piglets as well. I mean, the Yorkshire pigs on here are so prolific uh, in uh, in their uh, reproduction. It's absolutely unreal. They reproduce so fast uh, that, well, we ended up with 500 pigs very, very quickly on um, on the realism experiment so it's uh, yeah it's one of those things okay I think we should take that off there I don't often do the uh, screenshots live but uh, I think today we do that way you guys can see what goes into me doing these videos and the making of these videos as well so how's that given us so for corn that's almost a full thing I'm not gonna worry about any more corn uh, we'll probably have to feed them again tomorrow. Up next, uh, then, we will get... I think they take basically a bucket a day by the looks of this, which is okay. That's a good way to do things. Um, I don't think we'll start every video going forward now with a, you know, giving a bucket of feed to the pigs every day. I think that would probably be a mistake and not something we want to do. Uh, but I want to just sort of go through and... Um, do them today and, and, and do that setup. And I really like this little JCP. This is an awesome little bit of kit. Now this should fill this up completely, I think. I want to be careful with this. Yeah, it's not going to be that many litres. Wait, 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 wait. Right, we're now doing it on the ground, so I want to pick that up. And the great thing about the wheat, actually, is I think we could then pick this up and we could then go and give it to the chickens if we got chickens. As it is, we're going to put it back on the pile. Do we have... Oh, we do have some manure. 
We're starting to get some manure now. Um, we're not going to do any manure stuff until uh, the second year on here. And I have had, like, it's been interesting. I've had a lot of people in the comments um, saying, you know, keep on this map, keep going. We want to see a second year on here. We want to see you do more. So if you do, let me know down below. I am very intrigued to hear your feedback. Uh, you guys, at the end of the day, you end up uh, influencing where I go with these series. And if you guys say, I want more, I want to see more from this map, don't change this map, then I'm not going to change it. I'm going to do what you guys want me to do. So yeah, absolutely, if you want to see more from this series, not only hit that like button, but also let me know in the comments. And share it about. Let other people know as well. Because uh, that is a surefire way to get me to continue on a map. Is uh, if we uh, if we have a good number of people watching it. Absolutely will I continue a map. Nothing is written on in stone on here. Right, there we go. That is the canola in. So our pigs should be fairly happy now. Yep, we need to give them some water. So on our way out to get the straw... We will just turn this on. There we go. And then we can head back out this way. We'll put the canola back on the pile. And we'll go and get ourselves some straw to use as well. Now somebody was asking me in one of my videos. I haven't replied to the comment yet. Um, but was asking me, yeah, where did I get these uh, bits from? These... Uh, concrete blocks that we put inside this shed. Those are from the mod hub. Now, uh, if you want to do something like this that I've done in here, you will need the global company mod. And if I jump out, you'll see uh, why pressing Control and G brings up the global company mod. And under here, you've got uh, the various uh, bits that used to be separate uh, mods that are actually part of the global company mod now and this the activate extended placeable that is the place anywhere mod that's been rolled into here interestingly enough the horse helper is in here as well and that horse helper works with seasons so if you're looking for a horse helper that works with seasons global company mod has it built into it unfortunately of course it is pc only oh right let's nope we're gonna have to switch over to this and it looks like out there we have some more rain coming down. Yep, we do. We are... The, the amount of moisture in our corn now is utterly ridiculous. It's something like 50% moisture in our corn. It is going to take several... Well, it's going to take a full day of drying to dry it out. And of course, we do not have a full day's worth of drying available to us at this point. So actually, yeah, there's another question for you. So there is a way round this in Seasons. Okay. This should be the place. Oh, hang on. Oh, I got the wrong bit. There we go. Uh, so there is a way in Seasons of doing this, of, uh, of clearing the water out. Uh, under the Options menu, we can turn the crop moisture off. So, I want to know from you guys, would you like to see, uh, would you like the, uh, me to just continue and, uh, and with the, knowing the rain at the moment, we are not going to be able to get any further with this, uh, with our corn and get that, um, uh, and get that cut. Or, would you like to, uh, so we'd, we'd have to, well, we'd have to try and do something with it. I think we'd have to try and... Uh, and maybe make some silage out of it. But that's gonna, that is going to cause us problems in general. Or would you like me to go and... Um, uh, would you like me to turn the moisture off so that uh, if we get desperate, if we're getting to the, uh, into winter and we need to do it, uh, would you like me to go and do that instead? And, uh, and, we'll, uh, and we'll harvest it as normal. I uh, really, really want to know your feedback about that because we have been hit fairly horribly most of the autumn, uh, late autumn winter here with the weather. It's uh, it's really nasty when it does that. And we, we seem to get hit by that a lot trying to do corn on these maps. Um, and unfortunately, I, would, I, I don't think that you can use sugar beet uh, or potatoes as a substitute. 
Otherwise, I would start doing sugar beet and potatoes on these maps for this. Because it is just such a different... Uh, such a, a, a big sort of millstone around our neck. The, the rain on these, uh, these late autumn days. Right smack bang in the middle of harvest. Right smack bang when we need to get the corn in and get the corn harvested for our pigs. So uh, let us know. The alternative is to abandon corn completely and just buy enough pig food for the year. That is that is our alternative, really. Oh, wow. We can blow straw at any point in this area. Did not know that. But there we go. Nice big area of straw for our pigs. They won't take all of this. There we go. So again, we're left with uh, 3,205 litres. Close this. We must have taken two off the top row before. Right, and we're going to put this back in our feeding shed, which is essentially what this is. And we need to have a look at how much feed we need for our pigs. And actually, what state our pigs are in at the moment. Switch over, drop it off, and we're good. Right, that should be our pigs nice and happy. Uh, yes, it is, very much. So, uh, we've got no animals at the moment for the chickens. I think it might be wise for us to uh, have a look. Now, it's not this bit here. I think it might be this bit here. No. Nope. Where do we... There we go. So, uh, we have a possibility here that we could add a rooster in. Uh, we'll work to fertilize eggs, produce well chickens and produce chicks. You do not need a rooster to produce eggs. Now, I think we have fast growing, fast turnaround in profit. It requires a lot of feed. A hybrid breed, eggs and meat requires a amount of feed in between that of its laying counterparts. So we could try and do some meat chickens. Uh, it costs nothing to buy the Cornish Cross, interestingly enough. Uh, but they don't produce eggs. I think we're going to try Ro uh, Rhode Islands. Um, I'll need to look up the chicken stuff. But at six, we can take 500 chickens. So I think... We're just going to get a lot of chickens on the farm. Uh, they are free range around here. I think a couple of hundred chickens will be good. Let's see how much. It's only going to be about 1,200 for that, I think. Which is great. We'll go up to £1,000, actually. There we go. 962. Uh, and, uh, and yeah. Let's... Uh, confirm that 150 chickens around our yard who have arrived in the rain They're all over the place around here very free range let's hook up our uh, bucket and get ourselves because we have a lot of wheat we have a massive amount of wheat so we can easily feed these chickens there we go and it's done I don't need any water, thankfully. I don't think. It is just the feed. And we have a good ability to get that done. There we are. Chicken feed is in. Uh, let's set. see. That is a good amount of feed for them. They are... It says they're not clean at the moment. It'll take a moment. Estimated food requirements is 20,000 litres. For our pigs. Oh, we have more than enough feed for our pigs right now. So that is all good. So yeah, that has got all of that sorted. Let's go park this up. We'll park this in the feed shed. Uh, nice and out of the way. And all done and dusted. Like so. Park that up. Turn our lights off. And there we go. We'll shut the uh, door in the feature. Even though we have an open door over there, that will shut quite nicely. And yeah, now we can get the chickens started. And they will produce... Uh, so they will produce... Uh, we want to keep an eye on the weight. They'll produce both eggs and meat. We've got 150 chickens. We're not actually... 
uh, fertilizing at the moment. I don't know if I am. Um, you know what? I think we should run a test. I don't know if we will get any eggs uh, without the uh, without that, but we shall see. So I'm gonna buy a rooster. Now it doesn't say how many roosters, but I'm gonna move one and confirm that. So we now have a rooster on our farm. We'll see if we produce any more eggs because we've only got. Doesn't say how many liters of eggs. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 1.3 liters of eggs. So we'll see if that number goes up any further. As we jump into this piece of kit. And we are set up to do all seed radish already. Um, I think we might have some more seed back at the uh, shop. So we'll go and pop and pick that up. Um, and then I will meet you out at field 41. Whoa. Okay. That was an insurance claim. Uh, so I will meet you out at field 41. Uh, where we will get cracking putting some oilseed radish in. Here we are at the entrance of field 41, just the other side of our pigs. And what we want to do is try and line this up. Yeah, so that we can uh, get a good straight line along here. And we'll come and finish off these uh, little extra bits a bit later. But I just want to get myself in a position. 45 degree angle I think this is at. Yeah, this will be. There you go, 45 exactly. So we will unfold our sewer. So this is actually going to act as a double um, setup for our uh, uh, double fertilizer setup. Because this is this is basically the fallow stage. So I'll explain before I start on this. I'll explain what we're doing here. So we've got the crop rotation on. This field last time was wheat. We're going for fallow. But fallow basically means we're putting oilseed radish in. We're cultivating it in. And then we're going to put barley in here next time. So that is that is what we're doing. So we're going to put spring barley in here. We're early enough, or we're 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 still in time to put oilseed radish in. So we'll turn this on, drop this down, and that means that we'll be in a position where we are just able to uh, to do this and uh, and get the OSR in here, uh, and uh, and that. It's just going to work really well for us. It will give us a massive uh, thing of barley. means that we should have a really, really good setup. Yeah, there we go. And, uh, and we've got, not got a huge amount of the edge here that we need to, uh, to come and uh, clean up afterwards. Uh, we'll do that as part of the headlands uh, and it should work fairly well for us. It is a bit wider down this corner. But we should be all right. There we go. Uh, we'll go up to the tip of our tractor. Round we go. And it actually turns quite well, this seed up, I think. And line up. And down. And away. There we are. So there we go. That is getting this field nice and seeded with oilseed radish. It's not a crop that we're going to harvest. It's a crop we're just going to cultivating so well, actually the interesting thing is we have a direct seeder at the moment so in order to get this uh properly i think we can just direct seed into the oil seed radish but i don't know if that will still count it as fallow afterwards so what i want to do is i want to get it so that uh we come and we cultivate this field and in cultivating this field we make sure we hit that fallow we hit the oil seed radish and we maximize our crop form from it which would be really good uh, i also want to have a look at uh at the other fields that we're we're looking to do spring planting on because if we're successful in getting this planted we've got one more day and we uh we could possibly could conceivably seed another field with oil seed radish and if we manage to do that that will boost the crop on that field as well would be very good for us putting uh where we're going to put corn in 
So, uh, yeah, going to have a look at that as well uh, and maybe adjust the rotation appropriately as a result. For now, though, I'm going to continue on this field and uh, we'll pick it up a bit later uh, once I've got it a little bit further along. about three quarters of the way through the field at this point I think and um, I'm actually quite enthused by uh, the fact that I'm looking over at field 45 field 45 has germinated and germinated nicely uh, it should mean that that wheat next year we will get a really nice early harvest on it and I'm very very pleased on that um, it makes it all the more important to get this uh, oilseed radish in now uh, because that is just going to improve things. Uh, also, rather worryingly, is we only planted that last time. And yet, uh, we seem to have... Just going to jump out of here and show you this quickly. Some really, really high weeds. I mean, we couldn't run a weeder over this field anymore because these are just too high. So I'm wondering if that's uh, an error with seasons that's preventing me from having... Uh, low weed. I mean, it basically means the weeder is useless to us on here, um, which is a bit annoying. Uh, or in seasons in general, it looks like the weeder is a bit uh, bit useless. So, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Uh, that's not that's not great for us going forwards. It means we're going to have uh, to spray that whole field with weed killer. Pretty much what I thought we would have to do anyway. But, um, you know, a little bit... Um, a little bit unhappy at that that I uh, seem to need to do that anyway, and um, we will spray that field. I mean, we're good. Uh, we're good on that field for at least the first pass of fertilizer because uh, we've got uh, we. This Vatstad has a fertilizer pod on the back, uh, which is one of the reasons why I like this mod, especially now this mod has actually been improved. Uh, when it first came out, it had a little, uh, a couple of little uh, errors with it. Uh, it now seems to be working much better than it was originally. Uh, and this pod on the back uh, that you can see here, that is for uh, the Infusion 1600. That is for solid fertilizer. So that means that we're uh, fertilizing this as we seed, which is really, really useful. Uh, now, we're actually going to do two headlands. We're going to do a 12 meter headland on here. So I want to make sure that I can uh, reach the whole headland and give myself enough space to turn around. Ooh, uh, reverse. Because that's not what I have at the moment. We're going to end up running back over that bit anyway. There we go. I do like the turning angle on this Vastad as well. It, uh, it is a really, really tight turning seed of this. Uh, which just works out very, very well for us. There we go. Nicely lined up. I think we got one small row more to do. And then we're going to go round and do the headlands. Um, I really love this uh, this class tractor. So this is the time of year so that, that this tractor really comes into its own. When we start doing all the seeding and, uh, and all the field work uh, is why we have this. Um, it's not ideal for carting or um, what was it we had it doing? I think, yeah, we had this carting during the... Uh, during the uh, summer uh, or during the harvest because uh, we needed to we needed to, to have the JCB on the baler at the time so we had this carting which is not really a great thing for this tractor but it did the job there we go you can see the rain we get we're getting the tracks fairly uh, mucky um, from uh, the field work we're doing and then every so often when we stop you can see the rain cleans the wheels which I think is pretty cool uh, we've got a few bits missing there, but as I've always said, a, a little bit missing is not uh, the end of the world. Right, so we come around here and we're going to do two headlands. Starting at this point. And then we can come around and this allows us to get these, uh, these bits we left. It also means that ultimately we finish at uh, the entrance point to the field this side. Which is, uh, which is very much what we want to do. So get this into the corner. And as we won't be harvesting this crop, it's, it's not such a big thing about exactly where our headlands are. But 
I, uh, I quite like giving ourselves a good turnaround here uh, with this. Uh, and of course, uh, well, we can fertilize this crop, and we are fertilizing this crop. Um, I don't think it's a, a, a massive necessity to do so. It, it's going to act as a, a fertilizer itself. It is a cover crop, uh, the oilseed radish. So I think we might have to do a little bit more work in that corner with this. And we want to hit these bits here, make sure we have enough coverage, and we're all good. We don't have dynamic train on here, so it actually, going up this side here, it all looks like it's still straight. It actually hides any missteps I make, which is uh, which is quite interesting. Uh, I'm going to hit the top of this and bring this around here. Yeah, like so. And then round, give ourselves enough space to do the other headland bits. And yeah. This will uh, this will come out nicely. So this should give, as I said, this should give our barley a very very nice boost. Uh, and we want to really look at, uh, at the other crops that we planted because wheat we always harvest early, uh, corn we always harvest late. So trying to do oil seed radish after corn uh, is is just yeah a nightmare waiting to happen. Uh, and then uh, we also have. Uh, so we also plant canola. So we want to have a look at after the canola's in. Do we uh, do we want to do this there as well? Because it might work quite well for us there. And there we go. Because canola we can also plant at this time of year. But it depends on what the canola is planted after. And I have a feeling the canola is planted after the uh, the corn. In which case, yeah, there is absolutely no way we can get uh, oilseed radish in before the corn without having to leave the field fallow for an entire year. And the whole idea of this experiment, of what we're doing here, is to try and get the boost from the fallow after only six months. And if we can do that, that will work out really, really nicely for us. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a little bit of a challenge to see exactly what this does and uh, and what effect this has on our crop. Oh, wow, we actually got the width going into that corner pretty much perfect. Very, very pleased with that pass. So, yeah, doing two headlands seems to help us out. Seems to work a bit better. And, uh, and if I was using, this actually has drive laners on it as well. And if I was using those, um, we could do those uh, in the headlands on the second one. And, uh, and guide ourselves going for uh, an 18 meter. Uh, that is wider than this, so we're gonna have to come back out. Uh, an 18 meter sprayer. Uh, I don't know what width our sprayer is, actually. We'll have a look at that before we finish today. Uh, because I might experiment with these drive laners going forwards. See exactly how they work. See if we can get the most out of them. See if we can uh, do a really realistic harvest with them. Uh, where, we, uh, where we use the drive lanes to mark where we do our cuttings. I would love to do that. And if I can get these to work well, that would just work. That would just be absolutely brilliant. Uh, so we might have to have a play with that at some point. Obviously, for this crop, it's uh, it's absolutely pointless. So maybe, actually, when we put the barley into this field in the spring, that would be the time to use the drive lanes. Uh, give them a go then. Right, we want to get right up to this corner. Get as far into that as we can. Yeah, that's all good. Because we missed that last time. And there we go. Actually, we missed a small bit here as well. Otherwise, we would have finished perfectly. But I'm happy with that. That is all good. And that is that field done. Right, let's get this back to the farm. I'm not sure. We do have one other field. We've got our field of barley. So before we finish, let's have a look at that. Because we're not going to finish yet, definitely. 
So yeah, barley into corn. So that will be a springtime uh, planting. Corn into canola, as I said, uh, I don't think that's possible. So I'm going to adjust this slightly. We're going to go canola, corn, and fallow. Look at that. That bumps that up and really improves our corn. So I think we should do that as well. So let's head up to that field today. See if we can get this in and get this planted. And uh, and yeah, we will have two fields of because uh, it's only it's only 25 past 12. Uh, so we'll see if we can get two fields of that in and uh, and get that done as well. So here we are, field 43 for the barley. Now, why I, I do have a good question. Oh, that's wheat I've put in after the canola. Yeah, and we we can't. We're we're at a point where we can't really do anything other than that. But I'm. This works well for us. Uh, this is where it gets that little bit more interesting because we are not at an angle that's easy for us to do. But we are going to go along this edge. So I'm going to unfold this. We'll reset our GPS. I'm going to run along the side here. So it will be a slight, it looks slightly at an angle, uh, but it will work. We've still got 46% in here, so that's all good as well. Let's uh, set our first point, start it up, drop it down, and away we go. And then, uh, yeah, once we've got this done as well, get these two fields done today. Absolutely brilliant. Will be uh, will be really really good for us. So that should be far enough. And there we go. So I'm going to get this field planted now, and uh, and we'll go from there and see where we are at the end of the day. Because I don't think we've got that much daylight left at this time in the autumn. Coming to the end of the main body of the field now, and uh, yeah, it's gone quite well this. We've left a little bit wider headlands here. Uh, you can see where previously uh, we drilled. So uh, I've been overlapping a little bit with that, but leaving myself a larger turning area. And it seems to have created a straighter uh, bit here. We've missed less bits at the sides, which has been good. Uh, but we are, yeah, you can see here, uh, that we are coming to the edge of where um, where we want to be uh, and where it will uh, where it will do on this. Now I think there's about three widths there, so I'm actually going to go in a little bit further than I otherwise would expect to here. Uh, about here it should do me. And we should be able to get round here. I right, think maybe getting another row in here would be a good idea. Don't want course play, so we'll lose that. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, it seems to be going in pretty well. Um, we, we're going to get this done today, which is brilliant. I've been toying with the idea of possibly switching up my uh, crop rotation, uh, maybe a little bit. Thinking that we've, we've got three fields full of uh, corn here. So I'm wondering if uh, we might be able to do something a little bit uh, careful with the uh, crop rotations. But we'll have a look. Um, we are doing well. We are going to have to introduce... If we get more fields on this map, we are going to have to introduce another crop rotation, I think. Uh, and uh, and maybe bring some more crops in. Uh, certainly, I think that would be pretty cool in the long term to do that. Let's bring this down here and uh, start these headlands. So again, we're going to go around, grab the headlands. Uh, these little bits that have been missed, I'm not too worried about. We seem to have got our wits pretty much spot on otherwise. Uh, this is uh, this is going to be two full headlands. So, as I said before, what we can, if we can get this right, if we can get two full width headlands right on here, then uh, certainly we can use the drive laners going forwards and try and create a much more realistic uh, way of not only seeding but also harvesting and spraying and the works being by being given that guide on how to do it so uh, i'm very intrigued to see uh, if we can pull that off 
uh, by when we, we plant barley or canola or something that would actually harvest. As I said in the previous field, this field, it is pretty pointless us doing that um, because uh, we're not going to be harvesting this. Uh, I don't think we're even going to be spraying it, to be honest. I don't know if you get any bonus from a herbicide spraying uh, the crop, uh, a cover crop like this. Uh, whether that uh, means that you're any better off. Um, but I suppose we will see. Now this edge I am a little bit worried about. I'm hoping we've got... I oh, know we should be alright looking at this. I thought we might end up um, having to do a third run. But I think we're okay looking at this. Uh, it looks like we might have um, had to go a little bit wide on the return here before. So yeah, it's possible that that might cause us a problem. But in general, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, seems to be going well. We're going to have a fairly sharp turn at the end here with our cedar still down. So that we can get around this corner a bit. Do the U-turn and head back. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, we seem to have the right width here. Uh, I'm going to stick to the inside of the field, not to the headland. Because as you can see here, I think we, uh, yeah, there's a little more width needed than we have at the edge there so that's something to bear in mind next time i'm doing this field in fact to the point where i think looking at the amount we've left there what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll just back this up in a moment once we got to the corner and just go and get that last little bit because we want to make this field work as well as possible for us right so again had it just been that little bit that uh, had previously been left that would have been fine uh, this though is a much much wider strip than I'd originally envisaged maybe leaving so we want to come back and grab that again not overly realistic this I think you end up sort of double uh, seeding stuff I don't think yeah I think you tend to try and avoid doing that I think there are some places on farms where it's impossible to avoid doing that uh, but in this case here, we are uh, we're going to double seed it a little bit. There we go. And then again, we're going around this corner. I'm going to lift. And we're just going to go into the corner. Make sure we capture all of this. Not missing any. There we are. He says as he misses a bit. Right, that's better. Just a tiny bit in that corner, but again, not worried about that. We seem to have a few tufts of grass in this field as well. This wasn't a field uh, a field of grass that I changed, so that is stuff that is um, that was there initially as grass. Uh, so uh, I don't know what the plowing condition of this field is, so we might have to look at that. Uh, for, for the next go round. Uh, I think that will change. Oh, I suppose the playing condition will change once it's harvested. So I think we'll be alright till the next year. That should be all good. Um, I think again we're going to be in a situation in this corner where we need, yeah, where we need to back this up to the edge there. Like so. Down on that way. Make sure we get into the corner there. Get everywhere covered. As best we can. And get this field properly done. And get a bumper harvest of corn off here next year. The other advantage actually we'll have on year two. Is we'll be able to plant the corn really early. So it should be ready earlier for us. Part of what stopped us getting the corn this year was its its late availability. The fact that we, we couldn't actually harvest it until really, really late. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but knowing the British weather, it's probably wiser to put in a, a crop that we know we can harvest in the rain like this at this time of year. Uh, which would be something like the sugar beet and the... Uh, uh, sugar beet or potatoes. But uh, there we go. That 
has got that field completed. So I did say earlier on, uh, we... Oh, wow. We didn't run out of oilseed radish. We did run out of fertilizer. So I'm not going to I'm not gonna go and refill fertilizer at that point. We, I am going to turn this back on, though, and just get that last little bit of field done. It means we're going to have a patch in the corner here that isn't quite as well fertilized. Uh, but I don't think that's a huge issue. But yeah, there we go. Yeah, ran out of fertilizer just before the end of the field. But that is all good. We'll park this here quickly. And, uh, and we're going to have a quick look at uh, what we have in our garage. Uh, so our uh, 15 meter. So yeah, putting the drive lanes in isn't going to be perfect for us because... Uh, this is a 9 meter and we need an 18 meter uh, sprayer. So that might be something we have to have a look at. Uh, for now though, that is where we are going to leave at this video. So all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please give it a like, drop us a comment and give it a share. And for all the latest videos and live streams from Virtual Farmer, please subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.